Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show today. So today, we are going to be diving in and teaching you exactly what you need to know that's on your Dun & Bradstreet credit report. Look, commercial credit reports are very different than consumer credit reports. And so I get a lot of questions about what certain scores mean or why the credit issuer's name isn't actually on credit reports, amongst many other things. So today, we're going to decode this. We're going to spend about 30 minutes or so going through what you need to know that's on a Dun & Bradstreet credit report. So when you get your DB credit report, you know how to navigate them. So if you, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ty Crandall. I'm actually the CEO here at Credit Suite. And at Credit Suite, we help companies build business credit for their EIN that's not linked to their personal social security number. So we've helped like, I don't know, 15,000 uh, clients so far build business credit. So we know a lot about these kind of reports, but we also find a lot of people coming into us don't know much about their Dun & Bradstreet credit report, which is one of the reasons that we're diving in today. So we also, if you're interested in getting credit monitoring for your business, we have the cheapest credit monitoring um, anywhere you'll find in the world. Uh, you're able to get DMB and Experian through our NAV integration. And you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring anytime um, during this presentation or after to learn more about getting access to your DMB and your Experian credit reports. So Dun & Bradstreet, they are the largest and oldest credit reporting agency, period. This is even older than consumer credit. It's interesting. I still talk to a lot of people that think that or don't know the legitimacy of business credit. And the reality is business credit has been allowed around long, way longer than consumer credit was. Um, DMB was the oldest and still the biggest credit reporting agency, even above and beyond um, what you actually see out there with consumer credit reporting agencies. So you need a DUNS number to start building business credit. Um, that's one of the first things that you're going to need. We'll talk about one of the other things you're going to need. So Dun & Bradstreet offers a nine-digit number that's used to identify businesses in their database. It's called a DUNS number. And this DUNS number is necessary to get a credit profile established Dun & Bradstreet. So I have a lot of people that come to me and say, look, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. I've got these accounts. They're not reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. Well, and a lot of times they are reporting. Dun & Bradstreet just hasn't or won't populate a credit report until the Dun's number is obtained. So that's an initial first step when you're building business credit with Dun's, Dun & Bradstreet. Now, the Dun's number is free completely. And you can actually go to our website, creditsuite.com forward slash Dun's, which is just D-U-N-S. You don't even need to put the dashes in. And then I'll take you to the quick link that you can go to to get your free Dun's number. You can and always just Google it too, how to get a free DUNS number. And you can get DMB's link there. We just put it at creditsuite.com forward slash DUNS to make it easy and convenient for you to be able to access. Now, this number gets a business into their system. They will not populate a credit report or a score for you until this number is obtained. Now, don't get me wrong. You can still obtain some business credit without a DUNS number. The problem is you'll never have a credit report or score with Dun & Bradstreet until you actually get that DUNS number. Now, the main score in the business credit world at all is the Paydex score. Um, however, a business will not get a Paydex score unless it has at least three trade lines reporting. Um, and again, you have to need that DUNS number. So uh, I have a lot of people get stuck right here. They don't understand why items don't report on the Dun & Bradstreet or DMB's credit report. And it's because of one of these two reasons. You have to have a DUNS. You have to have three trade lines reporting to them. You have to have three accounts that are reporting to them for them to populate a credit report. Now, Experian and Equifax are very different. Experian and Equifax will populate a credit report for you even if no accounts are reporting, even if they know your business exists and they know your SIC code. But DMB is different. DMB will not populate a credit report for you unless you have three trade lines and unless you actually have your DUNS number. And this is a pretty big deal because I'll typically try to charge you thousands of dollars to be able to figure out how to do this. And if you followed any of our training on building business credit, you can do this without spending that money as long as you go to the free link to get your DUNS and as long as you're adding accounts that report to DMB and you have three or more. So again, you have to have both to get a Paydex score and to have a credit report populated. Now, DMB offers what they call database generated reports, which are based on information based on their own database. And these help their clients decide whether a business is a good credit risk. Keep in mind, that is what credit reporting is. What credit reporting agencies do on the consumer and commercial side is one thing and one thing only. They gather data and sell it. I guess that's two things. Their whole job is to gather it and sell it. And they sell it 
basically to credit issuers in a lot of cases for so they can determine whether you should be lent money, whether you should get a loan, whether you should get a credit line, whether you should get a credit card. This is what credit reports are for. So what DMB does is they gather all this data, they generate these reports, and these reports help anybody that will pay for those reports determine whether or not the person they may lend money to may be a good credit risk or bad. Now, that's not the only reason these reports are used, right? People that deal with suppliers often pull reports on the supplier to make sure the supplier is not at risk of going bankrupt. So they know if they pay the supplier that they're going to get the product they pay for. There's a, a marketing. They have all different kinds of marketing platforms where you can get all access to all the business data they have and you could find businesses of a certain size with a certain amount of employees in certain areas to be able to run a direct mail campaign. So there's a lot of things you could do with the data, but in a lot of cases, you're basically going to be most concerned about this one thing, determining whether you're a good credit risk. Should you be lent money? Should you be issued a credit card? That's where a lot of these credit issuers and lenders are using this data. So companies use these reports to, again, make informed decisions to determine if they should lend you money, if they shouldn't, collection efforts, et cetera. And a lot of factors go into generating these different reports. Now, in general, why, when DMB does have all the information that they need, they'll indicate as much on their reports as possible. This is very different. You know, consumer credit reporting used to be much different than it is. Before there was the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the reporting agencies would gather data about your sex life, about your marital status, about any rumors they could get, and they'd sell it to anybody that would buy it. When we got into the computer age in the 70s, the, the, the government regulated it. They put a law out called the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which regulates the data that could be in your credit report. You have to keep in mind, there's no, data, there's no Fair Credit Reporting Act in the business world. So anything they want to put on your reports, they will put on your reports, often a lot of alerts of different things that indicate information they have. So for example, we had a client the other day that had an alert put on her credit report because a company that sells trade lines put an inquiry on her credit report. They don't need her permission to do it. They pulled her business credit and that set off a red flag to DMB and DMB put that alert on their credit report. So there's all different types of things that can appear on these reports that you're not used to because you may not see in the consumer world. Now again, missing information does not necessarily mean a company Companies of poor credit risk. But again, if they don't have a lot of information on you, they will determine that you're a high credit risk or even an unknown credit risk. So DB's database has over 250 million records on file. About 120 million are active companies that are open. About 130 million companies are businesses that are no longer around, businesses that have closed their doors that they keep just for historical purposes. And this data is what gets into the reports that they actually um, issue to credit issuers and lenders. Now, DMB constantly gathers data and it works to basically improve how it analyzes that data to make sure that it's giving the most accurate credit risk determination as possible to the people that buy them for their actual reports. So again, one of the things you can do, and this is very interesting in the commercial world that's different than the consumer, one of the big things you could do is actually supply things to DMB to control some of the scores they have. So for example, if you have tax returns that are pretty good that show your business is growing and maybe even show a profit, well, those are things you want to supply to Dun & Bradstreet because you'll be in different risk categories and have different scores, whether they have your financial data or whether they don't. And I'll talk to you in a few minutes about what happens if they don't because it's kind of scary what they base your financial health on if they don't have that actual data. So the delinquency predictor. Now, DMB uses predictive models and scoring, and they take historical information to try to predict future outcomes. Now, this is to identify the risk inherent in a future lending decision, and they basically uh, take objective and what they call statistically derived data rather than subjective data. So this is very important. DMB has two kinds of scores you're going to be exposed to. One is called predictive scores. They take data and predict your risk of the future default. Then they have what's called performance scores. Performance scores are only based on how you've performed. So we'll talk about these different ones, but a Paydex score, for example, is a performance score. It only looks at your past payment performance history and calculates a score. Delinquency 
predictor is the same thing, but it's a predictive score instead. So instead of it just giving you a numerical rating based on how you've paid in the past, it takes how you've paid in the past amongst other financial data, and then it predicts your likelihood of what will happen in the future. So the delinquency predictor, again, um, it basically is not a guarantee. It's just the best guess they have of your risk of default. Now, the scoring system ranks and orders accounts based on the probability of late payments. But actually, what they're really looking for is the probability that you'll go 90 days late over the next 12 months. That's what they're looking for. Their scores are, will you go considerably late? And there's a lot of terms that they refer to. But what it really comes down to is, will you go 90 days late? Late on an account in the future. So that's what they're actually looking for. Now, keep in mind, new companies have no historical data. So this means they automatically are seen as a very high risk because they have no business credit established, because they have no business credit data for them to make and or for them to be able to produce these kind of scores. And if you've ever been called by DMB, this is what they say in their script. Look, somebody's inquiring into your business. You don't have any data reporting on your report. It looks like you're on the verge of filing bankruptcy. Eh, there is some legitimacy to that. DMB, Equifax, and Experian all will give you a failing score, an, a, what's called a delinquency predictor, meaning you're a very high risk of filing bankruptcy, even when they have very little information about you. The fact that they have little to no information about you is what makes you high risk. So keep this in mind. Not having historical data can absolutely hurt you. So here, let's look at one of their scores, financial stress percentile. So Experian, Equifax, and DMB all have what they refer to as financial stress scores. Whenever you see a financial stress score, you need to know that it is completely designed to depict your risk of filing bankruptcy. It's exactly what it means. You'll see these on Experian, you'll see it on Equifax, you'll see it on DB, DMB reports. Financial stress means your likelihood of closing your doors, ceasing operations, filing bankruptcy, basically going out of business. The second part of this is called percentile. The bureaus also have percentile scores. What percentile scores are, so you always know what they mean, is it means your risk compared to other people in your same industry. So for example, if they score you at 85% compared to others in your industry, that means that you are better than 85% of other people in your industry. Your score, your risk is. <clears throat> and that also means you're worse than 15% of the people in the industry. So whenever you see these words, financial stress, we immediately know this is the, this is a score that reflects the likelihood of filing bankruptcy, closing your doors. Percentile, it's basically reflecting that risk within your industry. So this score compares a company to other businesses in the industry. These businesses have the same industry, region, number of employees, number of years in business. So they're looking at similar businesses in the same industry to give somebody a risk. Why would they do that? Well, let's look at restaurants, for example. Restaurants are very high-risk industry. The majority of restaurants fail. Way higher percentage of failure than in almost any other industry that exist. So if somebody lends to restaurants, they don't need to know that restaurants are high risk. They already know restaurants are high risk. So they may use a stress, a financial stress percentile score to see how much risk are you compared to other restaurants. So this is one of the reasons they would do it. This is somebody that wants to know where your business ranks within your industry against similar businesses, not necessarily general risk overall looking at all industries. So the financial stress norms calculate calculate an average score and percentile for similar firms, the norms benchmark where a business stands. Okay, what are the norms? What's the average score? What's the average percentile against other companies in your industry? This is in relation to its closest business peers. Again, the people that are similar to what you do. Now, here we go with a financial stress score. We're still talking about financial stress. So we still know it's the likelihood of you filing bankruptcy. But here we see score. We don't see percentile. So what this means is this is an overall and general score that predicts your likelihood of filing bankruptcy, not taking into account the industry you're in, not comparing you to anybody, just general overall your risk of filing bankruptcy. So this score is designed to predict how likely it is a business will fail over 
over the next 12 months. And again, you'll see this referred to as a lot of different things. Failure, ceasing operations, filing bankruptcy, voluntarily withdrawing from business operations. These are all terms you'll see the reporting agencies put on the reports, but it all means the same thing your likelihood of failing in the next 12 months. Now, again, here it is, legal relief from creditors. A company stops its business operation without paying all its creditors in full. A company voluntarily withdraws from business operations, leaving unpaid obligations. A company enters into receivership or reorganization, or a company makes some sort of arrangement for the benefit of its creditors, i.e. you fail. You're closing your doors. You're going out of business. All of these are different terms that refer to the same thing, that you're basically not going to be around in a year. These scores range from 1,001 to 1875. A score of 1,001 represents the highest probability of failure. Low score is bad, just like with consumer credit. You want to get the highest score possible. 1875 is the highest score that you're going to get. A figure of one shows the lowest probability of business failure. Okay, so again, the 1,001 is what you want to stay away from. The 1875 is going to be the best, the lowest risk. So financial stress risk class. We know financial stress. We now know that that means that we're talking about potential bankruptcy, potentially ceasing operations, risk class. Let's learn a little bit more about that. The number ranges from zero to five. One is the business least likely to fail. Okay. So you want to have a low score on this one. Five is firms most likely to fail. So you want to have a low score on this financial stress risk class, which you'll see on your DMB credit reports. What about a zero score? Well, a company gets an automatic zero if a business is shown as discontinued at this location, higher risk, open bankruptcy. At that point, that's pretty much, if you're in bankruptcy, well, that's as low a score as you can get for a score that's used to determine if you're going to file bankruptcy. So that's exactly what a zero would mean. Now, here we are, financial stress percentile. We now know that. Score ranges from one to 100. One is the most likely to fail. 100 is the least likely. So you want to get the highest score here. It's a comparison, again, as we talked about, of other businesses. We already know that with a percentile score. Financial stress company, Megan, I'm not going to go through this again because it's worded a hundred different ways, but it really comes down to your likelihood of ceasing operations, of failing to do business. So supplier evaluation risk rating, a SIR rating. A SIR rating you're only ever going to care about if you are a supplier that supplies goods to other services or you deal with suppliers. This is where this score is going to become important. Now, it's a scale of one to nine. It predicts how likely a company will get legal relief from creditors cease operations or end operations without paying creditors in full over the next 12 months. Now, DME calculates this percentile and the, the financial stress score percentile that we've talked about, and then it applies a second set of rules to determine this rating. So it's still based on the financial stress score percentile. And we're going to talk about things you can do here to make sure all of these scores are good. So I have to start by telling you what these stores are score and how they work. Then I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to do to make sure you maximize these scores to make sure you have really good scores because there's a lot of things you could do to control your commercial scores that you can't do to control consumer scores. So one means a big company is least likely to fail. So one is the best and nine is the opposite. Nine means you have a high risk of failure. So again, SIR rating, why do you need it? Well, let's say you order, you make widgets, and to make widgets, you need a special part, and you order the part from a supplier. Well, as you get bigger, you're going to order those parts in more bulk. Well, the last thing you'd want to do is put $10,000 to the supplier of those parts, and then all of a sudden, you get a notice that they file bankruptcy, and you'll never get your ten grand back or get the parts. That's what the SIR rating is for. The SIR rating is for you to evaluate other businesses to make sure they're a low risk risk of failure before you pay them the money to be able to get supply so you don't lose your money and they file bankruptcy the next day. It's also the same if you're a supplier. If you're a supplier, you need to control what's on your Dun & Bradstreet credit report because other of your potential customers are looking at this rating to determine your risk of failing or your likelihood of delivering to, you, to them what they're actually ordering. So that's why it becomes important. Now, every credit report, Experian, Equifax, and DMB 
community also have credit limit recommendations. That includes two recommended dollar guidelines, a conservative limit, which suggests a dollar benchmark of a company's policies to extend less credit to minimize risk. So if somebody's lending on the lower side of credit limits, that's what the conservative limit is for. An aggressive limit, it suggests a benchmark of a firm's policies to extend more credit with potentially more risk. Why do we have this? Well, think about credit cards, right? You have Providian, you have Capital One, you have um, all different kinds of ones that deal with a credit one bank. They all deal with subprime credit. They know the risk is high. And then you deal with American Express, Discover. They only lend to people with good credit. So they deal with conservative. They could deal with lower risk people. So that's what you're talking about. Some people are more aggressive on their lending and limits, and some people are more conservative. So that's why they actually have two sets of guidelines. Now, DMB bases its dollar guideline amounts on historical analysis of the credit demand for companies similar to a business. That's it. So they're looking at other businesses in your industry, in your sector, and then they're basically looking at how those businesses are performed and the kind of credit that those businesses oftentimes access. Here's why it's very important that you get your SIC code right with the reporting agencies. They typically are going to get your SIC code from the Secretary of State or your own tax returns. So when you file your entity, make sure you file the right entity or the right the right the category and industry that you want to be in. Okay. For example, we could be in a million categories. We deal with business credit. We deal with financing, but we also deal with software and we consider ourselves to be a software company because that's, if you buy anything from us, if you pay us money, you're paying to access our software that helps people build business credit and get financing. So our SIC code with, for software is the same everywhere we fill it out. And that's very important. Meaning on a lot of applications, they'll ask for your SIC code. You need to do some research and know what the best SIC code that fits what you do is. Okay, in a lot of cases, you may be in an industry that doesn't have an exact SIC code, but you need to understand SIC codes are so important to business credit scoring. In a lot of cases, with Experian, and I, I look at these all the time on my Facebook live stream, you will see failing credit scores because the company has no credit and they don't like the industry that you're in. So it really can adversely affect you if you've chosen the wrong industry. So make sure that you know the SIC code to the industry that you're in. That best reflects what you do. Make sure that SIC code is what's used on your tax returns on any application that asks for the SIC code. And you also need to make sure that that's the same SIC code that you're using with the Secretary of State or anywhere else it's asked for. So we do this. We know exactly what our SIC code is. Anywhere anybody asks us for the SIC code, it's always the exact same number. Because if we used the wrong SIC code, then all of a sudden this can create all kinds of issues with things like credit limit recommendations. So the guidelines do not address whether a business can pay that amount or if they hit their total credit limit. Okay, DMB assesses how likely it is a company will continue to pay obligations within agreed upon terms. So this is all taken into account in the credit limit recommendations and how likely they are to undergo financial stress, which we now understand means ceasing operations over the next 12 months. So credit limit recommendations also take into account other things. Um, how much money are you spending? Uh, what kind of current limits do you have on your existing credit reports? How much money have you shown that you can borrow and pay back? And I see a lot of people mess this up when they build business credit. People look at building business credit as a means to an end. How long does it take me to build business credit? Meaning, how long does it take me to get a Visa card? That's the wrong way to look at it. What you need to do is think about vendors like Uline or Quill that you could really use to grow your business. When you get to store credit, think about the stores that you do business most with, the Walmart, the Amazon, the Dell. Get credit with those because the more you use the credit, the higher the limits are that you get on future credit. It's not about getting just five trade lines or five accounts that report to DMB. It's about getting five accounts and using the five accounts and putting as much money on those as possible and paying them off as agreed. That's what will get you higher credit limit recommendations as well as also help you get uh, higher credit limits in the future. So the composite credit appraisal. Now, this number runs from one to four, and it reflects DMB's overall rating of a business's credit worthiness. They analyze financial information, public records, company payments, business age. This is an interesting one because you can control a lot of what happens that's tied to this composite appraisal. Okay, now if a company does not provide current financial information, they cannot get a rating of more than two. So 
Very interesting here. What we're seeing is that you control this. DMB looks at this based on three things. One, do they have your financial data, i.e. your tax returns? If not, do they know the number of employees you have? If not, then you get a th third type of score. So there's three categories you can fit in. Do they have tax returns? Do they know your employees? Do they know none of that? So if they have financials, then you can rate higher than two. If they don't, you can't rate higher than two. So what's called a 1R and a 2R rating category show company size only based on number of employees. So you can't get higher than two. So what happens is if they only know the number of employees you have instead of your financials, then they're basing their decision on that instead of what they see on your tax returns. Now, they're assigned if a company's file does not contain. So if the company doesn't have tax returns, now they're assigning a 1R or a 2R rating based on the number of employees you have. So what's happening here is very important. What they're basically coming in and saying is, look, we need to determine your financial health how much revenue and profit your business has. The easiest way to do this is that we have your tax returns to make the determination. If we don't have your tax returns, we will make the decision solely based on the number of employees you have, which means the more employees you have, the bigger they think you are, the more stable financially they think that you are. Pretty important, right? So you need to know that you can decide to send them your tax returns to help get a higher score here. And you also need to know if they don't have your tax returns, what you're filing on your annual reports with the Secretary of State that tells the number of employees employees you have is going to be a driving factor to this and other scores that are based on it. So employer range ratings apply to certain lines of business not lending themselves to classification under the DME rating system. Not a big deal that you really need to know. So the Paydex score. This is DMB's dollar weighted numerical rating of how a company has paid its bills over the past year. So when we look at this, it's a rating of how you've paid your bills over the last year. So we know this is a performance score. It's not based on predictions. It's based strictly on how you've performed. Now, this is one of the reasons you should love building business credit because the primary score in, used in the business credit reporting world is the paid X score, and it's only based on how you've paid. That's it. Unlike the consumer FICO score, which takes into account utilization and length of credit history and new credit and the credit mix you have, this is only based on how you pay. All you need to do to get good scores are get accounts that report to DMB, pay them as agreed, and you get a good score. Now, the dollar weighted aspect of the score simply means that the higher limit accounts have a more weight into the overall score than lower limit accounts, i.e., if you're ever going to go late on a credit account, go late on the $1,000 limit account more than the $10,000 limit account. The $10,000 limit account will have more weight and more damage into the score than the $1,000 limit score will be. So that's what weighted mean. So DMB bases the score on trade experiences reported to them. Basically, the credit that they have on file that shows your payment history. Score ranges from 1 to 100. The best score you can get is 100. Paydex scores reflect how well you've paid your bills in the past, how well you've performed. One is 120 days late, slows, shows late payments. 100 is prompt payments, paying before the bill is even due. Mid-range about 50 means that you're, you're paying about 30 to 60 days late. Actually, a 50 score actually means closer to 90 days late. A 30 days, a 30 or 50 score is actually about 90 days late. About 30 is somewhere in between. It's like more of like a 60 score. So the DMB rating helps companies quickly assess a business's size and composite credit appraisal score. Remember, the credit composite appraisal score is based on the um, number of employees you have or your financial data. So DMB bases its rating on information in a company's interim of financial balance sheet plus an overall valuation of firm's credit worthiness. So again, they're taking the rating, they're looking at past payment performance, and then they're calculating it in with the other financial data that they have. Score ranges from 5A to what's called HH. Rating classification show company size based on worth or equity or employees, as we know. DMB assigns such a rating only if a company has supplied a current financial statement. If not, then they score you differently, reflecting they don't have that information. So the rating contains a financial strength indicator. It's calculated using the net worth or capital of a business, per preferences to use the net worth. DMB will show if a business are new or if they never got the information, they rank you, they rate you differently. It also adds a condition 
condition code or a risk indicator uh, that measures the amount of risk a creditor can expect. Okay, so that's what this works. Now, if accounts for key items in DMB's information report used to predict the likelihood of business failure, okay, and a company gets the lowest rating if no information is provided. So this is extremely important. DMB has a lot of scores, many of which we've covered. The two most important scores are Paydex, which we just talked about, and DMB's rating. Here's why businesses want these, and here's why it's very important for you to know this. Okay, DMB's Paydex is just based on how you pay your bills. But DMB's rating takes into account the financial health of your business per your tax returns or number of employees. So if you're going to get a business credit card, they're typically going to look at your Paydex score and be cool with that. They know how you've paid in the past. But if you want to get a business loan or a business credit line, then lenders are looking at other factors like your DMB rating. And so this is where, you know, you can't use business credit alone to just get a lot of loans and credit lines because of this, because loans and credit lines are taking into account other scores other than just your paydex. They're taking into account scores like your DMB rating, which means they're taking into account your financials, how healthy you are per your tax returns, the number of employees you are, where you compare to other people in your industry. So this is why when you go to get loans and credit lines, industry, time in business, financial stability, employees, all these things come into account for approval because they're looking at the DMB rating, whereas a lot of credit issuers are just looking at the Paydex score. And this is why I say that business credit is one of the easiest ways to get money for a business because it's not looking at your financial health per your tax returns. It's not looking at number of employees and size and all these other things. It's basically just looking at how you pay your bills. That's a super simple thing to control. You get credit that reports the reporting agency. You pay it as agreed. You get good scores. You get more and more and more credit. Super simple simple. But if you're talking about loans and credit lines, it gets much more complex because they start pulling things like your DAB rating, which take into account whether you supply tax returns, whether they have them, they don't, the status of those tax returns, how likely you are to fail per those tax returns, the number of employees you have, the industry that you are, where you rate in your industry, et cetera, et cetera. And these are all scores that lenders are using to determine if you should get loans or credit lines. So recap. DMB gathers objective data from a lot of different sources. We didn't talk about where, but I'll tell you. They get it from Yellow Pages. They get it from Facebook. They get it from your website. They get it from Yelp. They get it from anywhere your business is listed, which is why you have to make sure that all your listings online are congruent. They get it from public records. They get it from the Secretary of State. They get it from collection companies. These are all places that they're gathering this data that they're getting to determine these scores. Delinquency predictors used to determine if a company is likely to pay its bills, predicting that. The equivalent to delinquency predictor on the performance side is Paydex. Paydex scores how you've performed in the past. Delinquency predictor is exactly the same score. It's just used to predict your likelihood of how you'll pay in the future. Financial stress percentile score and risk class indicate if a business is likely to fold in the next 12 months. As we've learned here, financial stress always means business failure, and percentile always means how you rank against other people in your industry. Paydex is based on trade experiences, performance score, how you've paid. The DMB rating evaluates a firm's credit worthiness, taking into account Paydex score, how you've paid, and financial data per your tax returns of the number of employees you have. So a lot of good information. Hopefully, this made a lot of sense. The bottom line is, if you come through this, you can now look at a score and go, oh, yeah, financial stress score. That means I'm going to basically fail. That's what this is used to depict. Oh, look, here's a percentile score. That's where I rank against other people um, in my industry. You know that you can control a lot of this. Your paydex score is strictly based on how you pay. If you get accounts that report to DMB and pay them as agreed, you'll get a good score. You can completely control that. The When we talk about DMB's rating, when we talk about the appraisal composite score, these all are taking into account your financial data. You can control whether you give DMB your tax returns or not. That's your choice that you have. Okay, The number of employees you have, that comes from what you tell the Secretary of State you have. Again, completely in your control. You're the one telling the Secretary of State the number of employees you have. So be careful. Do you supply your tax returns or not? You need to know you have that choice. The number of employees you say on your annual reports you have, these are the type of things that are calculated into your credit score. Data they find on Yelp, Yellow Pages, Google, Bing, that all can populate on your credit reports. Alerts can populate from things they're seeing in all of these other locations. So you've got to control your reputation online. It's very important to your reports. And now you have a pretty good look at the major scores that DMB uses, how they're calculated, the score ranges, 
stages, but most importantly, how to actually control each and every one of those different scores. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. If this made sense, you want to see more of it, if you're watching this on pair on Facebook or on YouTube, like and subscribe to our channel. We'll notify you when we go live every single week, which we do so Tuesday at 1 o'clock Eastern. And don't forget to follow us on other channels as well, facebook.com forward slash credit suite. If you go there, you actually get our live streams that we do every Wednesday at 4 Eastern, where we use whiteboards and chalkboards and it's open Q&A. So any questions you have, we answer right there in real time for you. And then of course, don't forget to check us out on iTunes as well, the Business Credit Financing Show, where we do interviews with top leaders and we do an interview format. So we have a few different formats that we put information out there. Make sure you check them out. If you want the easiest place, just go to creditsuite.com. Top right of our page, you can find all of our social channels. And don't forget to check out creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring, where from there you can get our nav integration reports, which give you access to a DMB and Experian for only 24 bucks a month. So you can see what's going on in your business credit reports now. Any questions, please let us know. 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. We are live right now on YouTube. So if you miss this, you can go right to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash credit suite, and you can watch this in its entirety. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.